I forgot to plug in the right microphone. Here we go. Um, let's see if it took the right one so you can hear me in the best quality. Okay, I think it did. Great. Hey there, Lachlan, Lachlan. I mean, I'm from the Netherlands. I can say the Lachlan. Um, hi, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me in this ad hoc little stream session. Um, yeah, this is actually a follow up from my last streaming session. Uh, if you didn't see it, no worries. I'm going to recap a little bit. And um, well, if you didn't really see it, then uh, uh, yeah, I was trying to implement a issue on the Xamarin Informs repository, um, specifically that you can resize the font automatically according to the um, width available of your label. Um, so while that is uh, supposed to be very easy, um, it had some more implications and I couldn't get it done. So for the first video, you will probably have to have learned some basics on how to contribute to forms, how the solution structure is. Um, and I couldn't really sleep because of this, uh, me not solving this. Uh, so I decided to do a little uh, follow-up stream to implement the actual solution. Um, it's probably going to be like 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Um, I see there are some people joining, so that's nice. Uh, because I didn't really announce this, I just decided to do it in my kind of lunch break. Um, so the one that we're looking at is uh, this one. Um, as I mentioned, an issue to implement this new feature into uh, Xamarin Forms. Uh, well, not really an issue, uh, or not really a feature, um, but this is one of those things, Xamarin Forms has a lot of uh, APIs already mapped for you from the abstraction layer that Xamarin Forms is to the platform specific APIs. Um, but yeah, um, there are a lot of APIs that are still uncovered. Uh, maybe some APIs that are not available on all platforms. Um, and this is one of those uh, uh, APIs, one of those properties that hasn't been mapped yet. Um, and it looked easy enough, so I decided to take this one and uh, just, uh, yeah, combine this with a little bit of uh, learnings on how to actually uh, contribute to Xamarin Forms and hopefully um, make this uh, person Huda IT um, and, and a lot of other people as well happy in the process by, uh, by implementing this. Um, so if I switch to my Visual Studio for Mac here, um, then as a quick refresh, uh, this is the solution structure right here. Um, and what I did was, I'll start flipping it around, sorry. Uh, stop flipping it around. So basically we have the platforms here. So this is the different platforms where we can implement the actual API calls. Um, and here we have the Xamarin Forms core. So this is the actual abstraction layer where most of the controls and pages and that kind of stuff lives. Um, so here on the core in the label, um, down, down, down. In the label control, I've added a property. I think the naming could be better, um, but the, for now it's called the auto size property, which is bindable. And we have the um, auto size property that goes with it. Um, so it's called auto size. I think we need some kind of font in there or something because now you could argue that it auto sizes the label, which is not the case. Um, and whenever we have this, so now we have a Boolean to toggle this functionality on and off. And if we then go into the renderer, so this is the iOS one specifically. Um, so again, under platforms here, iOS, and you have this folder renderer. So this has all the renderers and knows how to map the properties from the abstraction layer into the actual renderer, uh, into the actual uh, native APIs and that goes through a renderer. Um, and here specifically we're doing that for the label. Uh, so what I had also set up is um, a method called the update auto size. So here is it, here it is. And we're calling that on element chain, which is, which is basically the, the first entry point for our abstract control. So here is the native control created and we're going to update a bunch of things like the line break mode, horizontal text options, etc., etc. And we have to add the uh, auto size here as well uh, so that we're sure whenever this label gets instantiated, gets inflated, 
that it gets the right value for the auto size as well and it does what the user expects. Um, so then you also have the on element property changed here. Uh, if you have written a couple of custom renderers uh, for Xamarin forms, then um, this is probably pretty familiar. Um, and here is, yeah, what it says on the tin whenever uh, a property changes on this element. So in our case, the um, auto size property, it will call this function again. And uh, yeah, we will respond to the uh, changes that are happening. So if I go down here, um, I already set up this uh, update auto size method. Uh, actually, I implemented the uh, solution for iOS already as well. And here you see this flag for if mobile and else uh, because macOS and iOS have this shared code base. Um, so um, um, here is what you would do for iOS. And in here is what you would do for macOS, uh, for instance, uh, where do we have something? Ah, here we go. So this is for the max lines. And here we see some differentiation for iOS and, and macOS as well. Simply because, uh, for instance, here on iOS, uh, to set the maximum number of lines uh, on iOS is called uh, uh, control. So uh, UI text view or UI label, sorry, UI label uh, dot lines. And on macOS, it's called um, uh, probably an NS text field, even the type is different, and it is, the property is called maximum number of lines. So, um, yeah, there is this little differences in naming and that kind of stuff uh, that you want to take into account. But here, the uh, all the Mac code is is nicely together. Um, so here for the auto size, um, what the actual problem was, I just simply thought I would do it like this. Uh, control adjusts font size to fit width, it, which is also a boolean. And I just passed through the boolean value that we got from the abstraction layer. And that was it. But unfortunately, that was not it. Um, so what you also have to do, I think I googled it a little bit and I came to the holy grail here, uh, Stack Overflow. Let me zoom in a little bit. And um, Actually, this is this is the accepted answer, which is, I don't know, I don't even know what it says, but I tend to scroll down and look at the other things as well that are in there. And in this case, that was good because uh, it actually had the solution for me because it's, it's basically a combination of three things that you want to do um, to make this auto size work, um, which is set the number of lines. Um, the line breaks to two clips, so make sure that it doesn't break to, to a next line whenever there is room to do that. Um, and you want to also set, I don't think I even did this, a minimum font scale. Uh, so what is like the minimum um, um, scale that, that the font will shrink to? Um, actually, I think I set the number of lines to one. Um, I think whenever you set it to zero, it will like determine automatically how big it should go. Um, but anyway, that, that is something that we could still uh, try a little bit. But if I go back now and enable these lines, um, so maybe set this to zero, see what happens. Uh, so I map these as well. So control dot lines is zero, control line break mode uh, to clip and actually set the Boolean value. And whenever I run this now, the simulator should come up. Um, with the um, control gallery, which is an application, Xamarin Forms application that is incorporated in the Xamarin Forms repository. And it's basically what we use to test this new kinds of stuff. Um, so again, if, if you didn't watch the previous video and this interests you, then uh, I invite you to watch the previous video. I explain it in a little bit more detail there, but uh, yeah, it holds all kinds of test cases that you can do manually or in automated tests um, to test all these uh, features and properties on all of our controls. And we also have uh, a whole bunch of classes here dating back to the Bugzilla era um, where we create reproductions of issues that come in on GitHub and we document them here and uh, we create a UI test out of it most of the times 
and that way we um, yeah can can quickly try uh, if uh, anything any new functionality breaks uh, the old ones or reintroduces any uh, regression uh, on the bugs we had earlier so this is the application um, maybe some designer can take a look at this sometime but uh, it sure is functional so here you have basically all the uh, generic controls that you can use um, and here we have the test cases this is actually where I added the um, functionality for now and you can search through here so let's just look for 7176 I know the number by heart because I was very annoyed when this functionality didn't work the last time um, so here you go hello world way too big for this label um, but whenever I say auto size now it still doesn't work see um, so I guess the line set to zero is not the way to go here I think we really need the lines is one um, but yeah here you can see that that sometimes whenever you try to implement a seemingly simple feature on a control it's just becomes a pain to actually do it um, so yeah I probably need to do some tinkering with this as well but uh, I just wanted to share this with you and also by the way test my new streaming settings because last time the screen wasn't very uh, the frame rate was going up and down and it all wasn't very nice but I think this is much much better much more stable so that's good and I won't bore you with that I mean you're here too looks good from here okay where is here Blackland where are your phone if I would have to guess I'd say it's something like Scottish or something or Melbourne oh wow that's whoa much further okay very awesome um, all right so let's go to this test case again 7176 ah you see it already took uh, the functionality now and whenever I toggle this then you see it toggles in and out of the box making it fit 100% uh, Australian chat so far oh really <laughs> so this is a good time slot for uh, when I want to reach the people in Australia that's good to know um, so what time is it anyway it's like 8 8 p.m. 9 p.m. that around that time um, well anyway so to give you a little bit more insight on what what I'm actually doing here is um, issues scroll all the way down to um, 7176 and here we go so here we have a simple stack layout um, this this follows a certain pattern so that I have some don't have to set up the whole page each time also here we have this issue attribute to make it show up nicely in our app um, and I have this test content page I create a new stack layout at this label with the auto size to true and I have this button to toggle it and see what happens then um, so whenever I do it switches around this this boolean and uh, that is why you can see this going back and forth so uh, yeah that that's what actually is happening here and you can see it, it works nicely now um, so you can imagine there's a lot of things because it, it hooks into the line break stuff as well um, I still need to add some couple of uh, additional test scenarios where uh, we would have to see if that that works nicely together but uh, yeah this this first initial thing looks good so by the power of Xamarin forms I now just switch to Android um, and fire up this emulator here if you were there for the previous stream um, then you would remember that my Android emulator crashed all the time as well when I ran this which made debugging extra hard which was an extra challenge but uh, I fixed that I've managed to fix that so uh, this all should run smoothly again 10 p.m. in Australia right right okay bedtime soon yeah <laughs> I just had lunch so uh, I have another half day to go Android builds take a little bit longer if there are any questions of course I mean I'm happy to chat that's why I'm doing this live and not recording this so 
let's see how we're doing. Come on, come on. Takes a, bit, a little bit longer than expected. I still need to set up my streaming background music thing to fill up these things whenever no one is chatting and I'm just sitting here staring at my screen, which is basically my day job. But now we're doing it all together. Aussie people in their times. Yes, I know, Stephen. I think it's around Australia, right? That they, uh, <laughs> that they have this, this weird kind of cornered in island that has its own special time zone. Isn't that around there? Uh, well, anyway, going to the test cases, 7176. Well, the Android emulator still doesn't really want to move forward with this. Come on, don't die on me. Oh, hey, something still happened here. That is weird. Okay, this is something new. So now my emulator still works, but it doesn't really respond very well. Whoops, that one. Okay, here we go. That's better. So here we still see the faulty kind of behavior. This doesn't do anything. Um, so, okay, I must admit, I, I cheated a little bit. I did a bit of advanced research uh, as well here. And you wouldn't be expecting this, but uh, it has kind of the same cause. And also I found the solution on Stack Overflow. I mean, um, I'm not, uh, not any uh, different than anyone else. I just find my stuff on Stack Overflow. And um, yeah, here is also something mentioned about um, if you set the width to be match parent or wrap content. Um, so actually it doesn't give me like the solution out of the box here, but that got me thinking like, okay, maybe um, I didn't actually try this one, but maybe um, it has the same kind of cost. So let's just try and um, go into the Android one and try a little bit of the same things here. So again, I already implemented like the plumbing here to, to respond to um, whenever you have here the up, uh, update uh, auto size on element changed and also on the property changed. And um, yeah, then when you have the update auto size here as well, I just basically did the same thing, but uh, Android has implemented some kind of enum for this. Uh, also here, I need to investigate a little bit more on what the other values might mean. Um, well, and the IntelliSense doesn't really give me the right options here for some reason. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the, the ones that I want to use are uniform and none. So none will just give us the old, old uh, functionality and uniform will give us the, the resizing that we need. Um, and it should be just saying again, um, um, calling this method and uh, with the right value and it should resize, but obviously it, it doesn't do that. Um, so if we now just say control set max lines, I think, yes, max lines also to one. And what do we have more also line break mode? Is it called here? Yes, oh, awesome. Uh, okay, so this works a little bit Thanks, Fanny. Nice shirt. Yeah, you're jealous. Do you do you have one? No, it's examining specific one, right? So, I guess you don't have one. Um, so, how does this work? This is an extension on the text view and takes the label. Okay, so if we go in here. Ah, okay. So of course. So here we are just taking in the abstracted label. So the examining forms label and um, actually just inspecting it to see what the line break mode is set to and um, set it there on the uh, text view that is uh, extended here. 
Okay, so okay, so that's probably something we want to do um, is go through the abstracted property here to just let it respond to all the uh, let it respond to all the events that are hooked into this. So let's just set the line break mode from here um, to no wrap probably, and I think. Uh, that whenever this happens, the property change should fire. So we should go to the, uh, where was this? No, set line break mode. Um, and we should just get to here. And it also sets the max lines. Okay, cool. So this should be all then. And then we set the auto size and then it should work. Um, oh, there's one thing to note for Android because there have been normal renderers and fast renderers. So this is the normal one. And I think the fast renderers um, are a specific set for a specific set of um, controls that would have some, um, yeah, that could use some efficiencies um, for, for rendering a little bit better. So I think they reinvented the renderers and call it fast renderers um, and incorporated all kinds of optimizations to uh, let it uh, render a little bit better, uh, which has as a result that uh, for the label. So if your control is in here that you want to work on, uh, you should do it for both the normal render and the fast render because people could be using both. Uh, again, I did the plumbing here already, so that should be in here. And I should just go to this thing here, and the code should mostly be the same, so don't worry about that. Um, it's just some other magic that we're doing that uh, will make these renders faster. So if I now click play, let's see if that is going to do what I want it to do. I see there's lots of activity in the chat, love that. I need to stream more in the middle of the day, it seems to work. Um, I got the Azure Docs pull. Wow, I don't have that one, and I need to get to the uh, back to the Microsoft Store at campus and get me a whole bunch of Microsoft clothes. Now I don't have have that one as well. Um, any form of programming shirts? Oh, Stephen, I'm so I'm so disappointed here. Is a face palm for you? How how does that work? Come on. Bring your A game. Power beer shirts, yeah. Steven wants his own creation, of course. Why should this be any different for shirts? <laughs> so Jan, I shouldn't call you out on the stream because if people watch this back, they're knowing that you're avoiding work and watching me. That is G Fuel, oh yeah. Definitely. Um, so 7176, there we go. Oh, yes. Yes. Achievement unlocked. Um, so you see this, this basically, you see, why are we even building cross-platform apps? They do the same thing anyway. They have the same problems. I mean, why are we doing this? Okay. Um, so yeah, the line break mode and the, um, 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 I maybe I should, dive into that a little bit deeper to see if it really matters now if I set the uh, uh, max lines as well. I guess it does because else it could break to the next line now. So uh, I guess that's important too. But also for Android, it, it matters that you set the uh, line break mode and the maximum number of lines. And hopefully, ah, no, okay, almost there. Uh, then this should be picked up as well. So why doesn't that happen? Uh, because this never get called, which could be because I am looking at this render. All kinds of confusion here. Ah, uh, because it now sets it almost always to no rep, right? And max lines zero as well. Uh, but still, I would expect it to go back to the bigger font size, right? Mm. Or maybe, maybe on Android it sets the actual font size to this and then it never changes um, in comparison to iOS where it maybe remember the font size that you initially set and then um, just make it smaller but not touch your initial value. Hmm. That might be something. Um, 
we should be able to see that control text view and text size is still 96 of course I don't know what it was initially um, issues 7176 so let's just quickly go into here um, font size is 100 so would this be 96 I don't think so I don't believe it okay but I can easily check this by setting a breakpoint here and not doing this yet and inspect what the value is then then we will know for sure I know Jan I'm failing live on the internet I mean how can I show my face outside never again Come on, Android, come back to me. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Yeon san You're saying, I worked this examiner in Forms once, but I quite enjoyed it. So great work. Well, thank you. Why did you stop working with examiner in Forms? And what would I need to do to make you work with it again? Maybe do a little dance. I can do that. From the Philippines. Wow, this is really a good time to be streaming. All these people, all this interaction, it's great. Okay, so now the text size is uh, 36. So that means it does remember the initial value, I guess. Uh, but why does it already, why is it already changed? Wait, am I looking at another label? That might be the case as well. 36, what's the text? Ah, see, this is master page. I'm looking at a another label here. Did I even get to the right page? I keep forgetting. No, I'm too busy chatting with you. I'm not even at the right page yet. Come on, focus. Focus. Okay, there we go. So now, here we go. Base. Du, 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 du. Text size, 262 and a half. Okay, I guess that is what this translates to with all the density pixels transformations going on. Um, 262, this probably means, what is it now? It is 96. Okay. So what I could do for now, at least to make you think it's working, um, is introduce a little private variable here. Initial font size is minus one. Um, oops. Oh, of course it's not. I still need to give it something. Um, do it far for now. Don't care. Oh, you can do that, of course. Okay. Wow. Uh, so what was it? Control text size. Text size it is a float. Sure. Make it a float. And then if your font size is. Is text size 
Oh, come on. Well, let's just do it like this then. Yes. Zero. F. Do it. There we go. Uh, so then what we would need to do extra is uh, get this one. Doot, 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 doot. Um, and basically say, okay, this is not going to be the most beautiful code ever, but uh, just to prove my point. Um, set out of size, yada, yada, yada. Uh, if, Android has a lot of these methods that are still setters and getters, which is not so common anymore if you're working with uh, whoops, .NET, where you just have properties. Oh, no, you have to specify the unit as well. Okay, so that's probably, I don't know. Control dot, what was it? Complex unit type, okay. Control dot. Text unit. Where did they hide this? Come on. Uh, text action, text camera. Maybe it's in some kind of getter, get text. No? Is it in a Ah, so Yeonsan has been using Xamarin Forms for a summer job. And what I found is that there aren't many components that you can use, like third party components or components that you would use out of the box from Xamarin Forms. Radio buttons. I don't think we have radio buttons. We do have checkboxes these days. Um, yeah, so I think the focus first for Xamarin Forms was to uh, map like the uh, um, abstract controls to actual um, the actual controls that are on the native APIs as well. So I don't think there's a radio button on iOS. I'm actually pretty sure. And I think Android has them. Not really sure, but uh, yeah, so that's the reason why they weren't in there at first. But uh, I think now, especially with adding the checkbox, we have ventured into the world of uh, uh, custom custom controls as well. So uh, I think there is actually an issue for uh, the radio button. So um, yeah, go check it out and uh, uh, hopefully you'll try Xamarin Forms uh, again and uh, give it another chance and uh, you like it more today oh you have done that okay good jason you should have created a custom renderer okay please explain because i'm building this into Xamarin forms right now so i don't see how i should use a custom renderer um i'm still trying to figure out where to get the um, complex unit from Just Google a little bit again. Uh, Android text view um, get unit. I don't know something like that. Uh, get a panel in this color. Ah, oh, for you, son. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of course, you, yeah. I shouldn't assume that everything is for me, right? <laughs> it's 
great that you're trying to to help him out. Um, get measure. I'm still struggling with getting this units. Uh, I guess that this control should have it as well, right? I don't know what it's using by default. Um, I guess it's this density pixels kind of thing. So let's just try that and I'll figure it out later. Um, so then I set back the text size to the initial value. So what I'm trying to do now is capture the initial value the first time this gets loaded uh, to see what text size, what font size is uh, entered um, on the Xamarin form side. Well, actually what is translated to Android. Uh, so I only do that whenever it's it's zero. So I only do this once uh, to get the, the initial font size. I see some potential for, for more bugs there as well. So I need to think this through a little bit more. Um, then I set the line break mode to no wrap, which was uh, necessary to make this actually work. Then I set the um, actual actual shrinking thing. And then whenever we have the auto size functionality turned off, I uh, set the text size back to the initial font size so that it should show up um, however it should be originally. There could be another thing going on here as well, um, which is simply that the label does not, woo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see I already introduced some bug here. These labels aren't supposed to be so big. Um, but does this then at least work? It seems to work, uh, but I think the font is bigger than it, than it originally was. So, uh, um, yeah, this is probably something that I need to look into a little bit more and capture the uh, complex unit type from the original control. Maybe I can see it here when I'm running it and where it comes from um, so that we can get the control back in its original state um, and maybe uh, make it work that way. So pretty quickly, do I see it somewhere in here? No, don't think I do. All right. I'll figure that out later. I think for now, this is uh, the most that I can get out of it. So then I should finish this up and uh, open a pull request, of course, when I uh, would not be on the Xamarin Informs team, then, um, uh, well, it, it doesn't really matter, by the way, if you're on the team or not, you still have to open a pull request and we're going through the same uh, process altogether. Uh, but you would open a pull request from your uh, forked repository and uh, describe a little bit what you've done and why you think this is the best solution for the thing. Uh, so maybe that's something for a follow-up stream to uh, have this um, this actual uh, solution implemented and uh, maybe uh, to see what it takes to open a PR, write a UI test for it, so I can handle uh, a bunch of different things uh, still in this space. Uh, for contributing to Xamarin Forms, but uh, for now, I thank you for watching and uh, I still have some time for a couple of questions or anything if you have them. Um, so if you have them, please tell me now before I will shut this off. I think the quality of the stream was uh, pretty good, right, as well. I didn't notice any frame drops or anything. So again, my new settings seem to work for me, which I'm really happy about. Um, I did do that. Quality is great. Thank you, Yon. Shouldn't you use zero instead of casting it to int? Yes, Yon san. Very good question. Um, I should have done that, but that was why I put in the disclaimer that this would not be the nicest code that you'd ever see. Um, yeah, I actually tried it with the zero F, but uh, I always get confused which letter I should put behind this um, to make it work. But maybe the trick is to do this, which also doesn't work. So that's not it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> um, it was kind of a ad hoc little thing stream to uh, just uh, demonstrate where I left off with the previous stream and also uh, a little bit secretly to test out my new uh, streaming settings. But uh, is there anything else you'd like to see that I'm missing? Then uh, sure, I'm happy to accommodate.
I'll make sure to make, make my next sessions that I plan them a little bit better and uh, just make them a little bit longer so that I have the time to actually do anything. It looks good, your stream. Yes, thank you. Me or the stream? Are you finishing this issue in life? That is a good question. Um, I guess I could. I guess I could do it. Ah, well, that took a long time before someone asked me that. Why is Gerald spelled with a G, but your Twitter name starts with a J? Yeah, that's a very good question because, and I'm still, so maybe I should ask my friends here um, in the chat. Um, the the, the J, J comes from my full name, which is John Fitzgerald. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, at some point I did all my handles with the, my initials and then my last name, uh, but... Yeah, the name I go by on a daily basis is uh, Gerald for some reason. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that is, I think, some cause for confusion from time to time. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe I still need to change all my handles and uh, just be Gerald for the internet people. But uh, I don't know. What do you think? Or just change my name to John. <laughs> I will go as John from now on. C sharp fits. <laughs> I think that doesn't really contribute to the not confusing part. All right, thank you, people. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will think about uh, who asked. Yes, Pass, are you going to finish this? Um, when saying with uh, should I still convert that to DP? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm thinking about it, but then I have to uh, uh, plan my um, live streaming a little bit better um, to to have some more time in the evening and to actually solve this. Uh, so for now, Tuesday e my evenings. Um, I mean, I don't know how it is in New Zealand. Uh, work pretty well for live streaming. So. Yeah, let's just stick with this. Uh, let's just stick with with this issue and uh, try if we can see it uh, to get it solved uh, while live streaming. So let's just do that. Um, Jason, when working with fixed values, when setting with height margin, should I still convert that to DP? Uh, no, I think that happens automatically because um, if I just quickly switch back to the screen here. Um, I don't know how long of you have been watching, but when I was just debugging this, um, I'm setting the size here, just the label font size to 100. And it came out here as like, I don't know, much bigger, I think. I think it was a uh, 160 something. I don't, can't remember, but uh, so it, it does some conversion automatically already for you uh, between the, the Xamarin Forms abstraction layer and the uh, actual Android um, native layer. So. You don't have to worry about that when you're working with Xamarin Forms. I hope that answers your question. All right, with that, I'm going to end it for now. Um, thank you. Sorry for the people who expected a little bit more. Uh, it was kind of a, in the spur kind of moment that I started the stream. So uh, I'll do my best to make it a little bit later, more structured and. Uh, so you have more time, more quality time with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully you'll watch next time. Be sure to be following me on Twitch and that kind of stuff so you'll be notified automatically. And all the archives could be find on, uh, found on uh, YouTube uh, where my handle is actually Gerald Verslaus. Uh, I don't know how that happened. It wouldn't take my JF Verslaus uh, handle. Um, to make things even more confusing. So uh, also subscribe to that so you can watch back the uh, archive streams. Thanks so much. Until next time.